It's a pleasure to have you once again this budget week. Uh, tomorrow, the budget will be read. And we want to help you make some sense of the budget as a document so it doesn't pass you, like say, it was their budget. In the studio, I have uh, the right person to tell us about that. Uh, we have Mr. Michael Seguire, Executive Director for ABSA Bank. Michael, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Samuel. All right. Um, budgets come with opportunities for business, that, but we may not see it. Mm. Please help us identify some of the opportunities um, next year's budget could offer that businesses can harness. Excellent. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for the opportunity of coming here yeah. to share. And I'm going to share from the fact that um, I see businesses mm. from a banking perspective, but for I'm also engaged in business. Yeah. When they read the budget, they talk about gross numbers, they mm. talk about exports, they talk about imports. I think it's important to put yourself in the shoes of where government is mm. and what opportunities they come with. Mm. It's a good thing that we are talking about growth in GDP. Yeah. What does that actually mean? Mm. That there is opportunity. Yeah. There's opportunity to sell what you are doing, mm. right? Inflation mm. being managed yeah. at 5% means that I can plan mm. and say, okay, if it is I'm um, importing fuel, yeah. I'll generally manage it exchange rate what does that actually mean mm. so when you look at these figures we need to connect and say what do they actually mean for my business yeah if you're running rentals as an example mm. and government is planning to cut right mm. will your tenants be in your rentals mm -hmm. will there be capacity for them to pay that rent mm. so those are the things you need to look and tap into okay. when you look at this budget government plans to spend on infrastructure, yeah. how do you tap in? Mm. The oil projects are still taking place. Mm. How do you come in to ensure that you are part of that? Part of the figures that they've talked about is the fact that 57% of our exports go to East African countries. Yeah. What do they want in Sudan? What do they want in Congo? Mm. What do they want in Tanzania? What can you provide Kenya from a business perspective? Yeah. We've seen businesses come from Uganda and grow into those areas. Mm. How best can we figure out? If they've talked about, yeah, very soon, maybe we shall have the railway from Naivasha mm. to Kampala mm. or the water transport being connected from Kisumu. Yeah. How does that fit in? Those are the opportunities I see mm. from a layman's perspective to ensure that I position myself. I see the bigger picture. Mm. Where are the opportunities for borrowing? Yes. If government is actually borrowing, it's a good thing for you and me mm. if you are saving. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> yeah. Because ultimately, yeah. okay, yeah. if you are saving, either you will end up uh, giving back uh, government borrowing from you. From me, yes. Okay? Mm. If you are saving. If you are saving in forms of a pension fund. Mm, like you understand NSSF. NSSF. Mm. That's a very good opportunity for your money lying there. Mm. And that's, those are the opportunities I see in the budget that has come through. Okay. And basically my take then from that is that um, you need where government points a finger is where the money is going. Exactly. And where that's that's where the eyes and the plans and aspirations should go as e a business. Exactly. All right. Exactly. Now, uh, we have seen opportunities, but we want to also focus on the concerns for businesses, particularly SMEs, that m are going to face us as the financial year starts. Mm -hmm. It's a financial year, but there could be issues we need to take into account mm. to thrive as businesses. Yes. What are some of the things that you can identify for us? Yeah, f for, for us to thrive, um, how much money is putting aside, uh, is being put aside mm. for infrastructure? Okay. Whether it is road construction or putting up buildings in town mm. or the whole infrastructure, mm. how much is being put in? Now, am I part of the construction business? Mm. Okay. Is there a way I can tap into what's happening in Hoima? Mm. We, there's a lot of discussion around the pipeline. Yeah. There are people I know that are tapping, organizing themselves to ensure that not just paying the landlords where the pipeline is going to mm. pass, but you're part of the services that are coming through. Okay. So from a business perspective, that's where I see. Mm. 
if you generally look, what are the interest rates going to look like going forward? Because that's determined GDP, inflation, mm. and all those other things. W how do you plan? And, and part of that, and I don't want us to look from a Uganda perspective yeah. per se, because some of the headwinds that come through mm. are driven by what's happening. So this is a pseudo zone for reading budgets okay. and uh, understand what's happening in the Kenyan space. Mm. Because all our goods come through Kenya. Kenya, yeah. You understand? Mm. What's going to happen in the dollar space? Mm. You understand? Such that you have an idea and you plan. And for me, that's what I'm looking at. Okay. There will be some challenges. Mm. What is government doing around the areas? Mm. You understand? You have only given us 200 billion of 7 trillion. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. So it clearly tells you the yeah. season we are in. Mm. Fasten your seatbelts, they say somewhere. Mm. Make call for fastening your seatbelts to ensure that you plan. Yeah. Um, if you're handling a government deal, there might be some delays. Mm. How do you still keep those cash flows, yeah. your employees, your suppliers happy mm. amid these certain delays that could come through? What are the capital opportunities yeah. eh? uh, to fund your working capital, mm. to fund those delays? What are those? That's what the budget is telling you. Mm. The budget is there to point a picture to the next year. And after the budget has been read, yeah. pause and think, how do I fit in? What do I need to manage going forward mm. as a business, also as an individual? Okay. S you mentioned uh, this animal called interest rates. Mm? Let's just use it as an illustration. Yes. Uh, you, you coming from the bank. Yes. If I'm a business, how does that concern me? Looking at the interest rates. Yes. Interest mm. rates are important because that's the amount you will pay for borrowing. Absolutely. You will either borrow from us or whether they are money lenders or whatever, yeah. whatever source of, there will be a tag. Mm. Now, when government chooses to come and borrow from the domestic market, yeah. right, we first tag ourselves and say, okay, how much is government borrowing? Okay. Okay. Mm. Um, if they are giving us for a 10 year bond, yeah. 20 year bond, 16%, mm. what will Michael? How much, what's the premium? Because Michael is likely not to pay back. He's more risky. He's more risky. Yeah. Michael and Sons, yeah. right? Yeah. We need to factor in a certain pr premium. Mm. You get it? So if the interests are within expanding that portfolio of domestic borrowing, yeah. that means they will want more money. Mm. There's a possibility of interest rates going, going up. up yes. So how do I plan for that in my business? But... On the other side, there mm. are good things also. Mm. NSSF, pension fund, certain savings may benefit if you're investing that way. Yes. If you also choose to say, I have some money and I also want to lend to government, mm. it's also an opportunity for you. Absolutely. So there are two sides to it. It could be a cost element if you're borrowing. Yeah. It could be an investment opportunity to also be part of the lenders to government. If government is in the market to give us, um, to, to borrow more from uh, domestically uh, through the banks, how does that impact a fixed deposit person like me if I have money f to, put to fix? How does that play for me? So fixed deposits generally run for tenures mm. at times lower than what government is offering. That's true. Um, and, and there are certain terms that are not necessarily on the government side. Mm. Um, also, fixed deposit can be used in certain cases to hedge as against certain borrowings. Okay. You get it? Mm. You're fixing money, but you're also borrowing on the other side. Mm. Okay? Mm. So it depends on what you what actually you want for. to mm. do mm. with your money. Mm. Um, it may be that you are just waiting on the deal to mature or that application to government to go through yeah. and then you want your money to invest. Mm. So depending on what you want to use with your money, you either use fixed deposits, savings mm. account, or think about longer uh, lending to government. I'll bring you back here and we just talk of fixed deposits alone <laughs> another day. Yes. Let's take our last final question. Uh, have you noticed inflation is going down, the government is celebrating, saying, yeah, we are in, in charge. But cost of living remains stick things remain expensive. Yes. What is that? What's going on? Yeah, I, I wanted us to play this back a mm. bit. Last year, Ukraine war was starting. True. 
and everything went up. The mm. cost of getting fuel into that pump mm. meant that you had to pay 6,000 shillings mm. for a liter of petrol diesel. Mm. And for the first time, we saw things go the other way, mm. right? Um, and there it was, 6,000. Yeah. I think if you read in the State of Union address, you could see the prices have definitely come down to 1,000 1, 1, shillings. 1,000 shillings, mm. okay? So generally what happens is the matoke coming from Isingiro or wherever, right, mm. was priced in at a certain time. Let me assume it was 1 million shillings to get that matoke in a yeah. truck yeah. to here. Mm. You understand? The question is, has this owner of the truck embedded the reduction of yeah, this 1,000 shillings. Yeah, I get the point. You understand? Yeah. Now, if they haven't, generally there's a fixed cost that has come through. For them, they have remained fixed. They have they remained, yeah, yeah. you understand? Yeah. And generally, the rent person might have also increased as well. And will not The go medical back. people might have also increased as well. And, and what's happening to our incomes? They the probably remained flat. I've not been increased. Uh, uh, Do you understand? Pay rises don't come for me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so the point is, yeah. when you're measuring inflation, it's at a point in time. Mm. You understand? Mm. And there are goods that come up and down. Food prices. Mm. There are also certain goods that generally tend to go up. Okay. There is also the imported inflation that comes through. Mm. But the real pinch, and why people feel that way, uh, is the fact that the revenues have actually not gone up yeah. in the same circumstances as inflation yeah. and that's where the pinch comes in okay thank you very much for simplifying <laughs> it yes yeah because now i know the matoke man and uh, the rent the rent or the, the owner of the place i rent for him is not <laughs> going to reduce when they have increased thank you very much michael for breaking it down viewers we hope we added value to you by this discussion so when you see the budget opportunities there are some concerns and if you wonder why inflation is going down but your cost of living is remaining up, now we know. That was the link. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you.